Those joining us now, Mike McKenna, president of MWR Strategies and columnist for the Washington Times. Mike, welcome to Middays. Thanks for joining us. You betcha. Thanks for having me. All right, so things are really starting to heat up in the political world in particular. We've got Joe Biden scheduled to announce his bid for re-election tomorrow. It's my understanding, Mike, that this is going to be a video announcement, not even a live announcement. Are we going to see another basement campaign? Yeah, I think so. Um, You know, the... It worked for him the first time, and uh, and truthfully, I'm not sure he's physically capable of any other kind of campaign. So it's you know it it's it's it, it is expected, right? And it's um, I'd be amazed if he if he had more than a handful of public events, right, where where he was actually out and interacting with people. I think a recent poll shows, uh, I, I believe I got this figure right, seventy three percent of those surveyed yeah. do not want the president to run for re-election, which, of course, includes a significant number of Democrats. Yeah, well, it's pretty obvious that it, the Wall Street Journal said it best, I think, on Friday, maybe, the, the editorial page said, hey, it, it, every, anybody who is willing to see this knows that this fella is deteriorating right in front of our eyes. Right. You know, at, at the end of it, at the end of this second term, he would be 86 years old. You know, I, I don't know how to say this the right way, but I don't think anybody thinks America is going to surge to greatness under the leadership of a of a guy in his middle eighties. That's just not going to happen. Yeah. Well, do you see anybody else emerging as uh, a possible challenger uh, for the Democrats? Gavin Newsom, the governor of California, set up a super PAC about two weeks ago, okay. and it, it wasn't it wasn't like announced. It was very low key. But I thought to myself, that's the kind of thing you do if you're about to, if you're thinking about running for president. And you don't want to, you don't want to get, you don't want to get everybody too angry all at once. But it's obvious to me that Gavin Newsom's thinking about picking up the pieces in the event that that there's a fall. Yeah, and of course we've already got uh, Robert uh, Kennedy, who was announced, I, uh, and Marianne Williamson. I'm tremendously yeah, yeah. excited about both of them. You know, the <laughs> thing about Robert Kennedy, right? Name ideas like nothing else on this planet, right? Yeah. You know, everybody, everybody in the world knows who the Kennedys are. Sure. Um, and there was a survey that the first survey out of the gate showed that he was percent of the vote against against um, President Biden. I have no idea if that's true or not, but if it's true, it's remarkable. Yes. Yeah, say it again. You broke up a little bit. What percent of the vote? Fourteen. Yeah. One four. Yeah. Uh, percent of the vote against Biden, which is just remarkable against a sitting president. So. Yeah. Gosh, I I don't know what to make of that. Gavin Newsom has been sort of active, really, in in blasting uh, Republicans. And in particular, he's even taken shots at uh, our state of Mississippi here. Just any Republican-led state, uh, Gavin Newsom sees fit uh, to trash, especially Florida, Texas, uh, the big high-profile red states. Is this a winning strategy? I, I'm glad you asked me that because I've been looking at it for the last month, thinking to myself, you know, eventually you're going to run. If you think you're going to run for president, you're going to need some votes here. Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't get the idea that you walk around and tell people, you know, go into their own backyards and say, "Hey, we're doing it better than you are across the way." And it'd be one thing if he was running Florida, if he was running Texas, if he was running a prosperous state, a, a, a healthy state. But he's running California, from which human beings are fleeing at an enormous rate, that they're going elsewhere as fast as they can go. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I the hmm. chutzpah of the guy is pretty amazing <laughs> if you think about it. It seems to me like that just gives fodder for uh, Ron DeSantis uh, if he officially enters the race, honestly, when he starts contrasting his state of Florida to the state of California. I don't know that that's very useful in a primary against uh, Donald Trump, but should he advance to a general and and do some where the, the Democrat nominee, that, that seems like that'd be pretty effective. I, it, it's right. It's a good it's a good comparison. Hey, you know, uh, a million people left your state in the last year and a half and moved basically to Florida and or Texas. So, you know, people are already voting with their feet there, Governor Newsom. I, I don't understand it. It's indefensible. 
um, from a policy point of view. Um, I get the feeling he's not the sharpest pencil in the box sometimes. <laughs> yeah, that that seems to be the uh, fair, fairly evident as well. Uh, do you believe in the possible theory, I guess you could call it that, that Democrats were are comfortable electing a Joe Biden because they don't feel like he'll last through uh, the entirety of his second term? And his running mate, Kamala Harris, would, of course, be escalated uh, into the White House as the president. And, of course, that would be a rather monumental mark, she being an African-American female. Yeah, I'm sure there's some some, some of that thought going on. Um, I think the main thought, though, and this is, this is, um, this is I think, important, right? The main thought is, is that Joe Biden is a happy face on a terrible agenda. <laughs> you know, everybody looks at Uncle Joe, you know, and says, oh, he's a good guy, right? He's he's one of us, right? Everybody out in America, he's one of us, right? Yeah. He's a union guy. He goes to church. He's a normal guy. He likes cars. He likes ice cream, <laughs> right? Um, they need that, right? Because they are, they are pitching an agenda that is about three clicks to the left of anything any American would tolerate on the regular, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so you know, part of it is part of it is you know they'd like to keep um, Vice President Harris in line, right? Um, part of it is that they really need him as a as a front man for this operation. I, you know, I don't know how to say that. I don't know how to say that any better. If the election, if the primaries were to be held today, let's put it that way, I, I think we would see Joe Biden versus Donald Trump uh, to advance to the general. How do you see that playing out in twenty four, Mike? <laughs> you're trying to get me. You're trying to get me in trouble with all my friends. I like that. I appreciate that. Um, no, I'm interested in your analysis. <laughs> yeah, I mean, here's the thing, right? Seventy percent of the voters have said they don't want Joe Biden. Yeah. Sixty percent of the voters have said they don't want Donald Trump. Um, so the two main parties are, of course, going to give them Donald Trump and Joe Biden. Um, <laughs> it, it, it really is going to be. It really is going to be dependent on two things, right? On what kind of campaign gets run. If, if, and, it, and it'll be real, right? Joe Biden, I know what kind of campaign he's going to run. He's going to sit in his basement and say, we did a bunch of good stuff for you. Um, you know, and by that, he, of course, means we spent a bunch of your money, <laughs> stuff you may or may not have agreed with. But anyway, um, so that's the campaign he's going to run. Donald Trump's going to, if, if Donald Trump runs a campaign like he did in 2016, forward looking, about the issues that people care about, about immigration, about the economy, about our failings in the world, however you think about those, right? Um, about about well, culture to a certain extent, right? Yeah. Um, he'll win. Hmm. Yeah. If he runs a campaign about grievances and about himself and about a vendetta, he will lose. No, no, no. I don't. I don't think it gets any simpler than that. If, if the campaign is about the people. If it's Donald Trump and Joe Biden, it's about the people. Donald Trump will win. If Donald Trump, if President Trump makes it about President Trump, he will lose. You know, that, that's as simple as it gets. Yeah. I, I actually agree with you. I saw also a recent poll that showed that 60 percent of independents, I believe, this may have been in the Washington Post, 60 uh, percent of independents don't, would not support Donald Trump. And I felt like, well, that kind of spells... Uh, defeat for Donald Trump. You you got to pull off the uh, the independents. What do you think? Yeah, it, 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 it's a, it's a problem. And yeah, I think it was in the post, but I don't I don't read the post, so I don't, I'm not sure. But um, <laughs> it, it, it it's a problem, right? And that's why he has to make if he's if he if he is the nominee, the campaign has to be about something other than him. Yeah, because if it because if it's about him, he's going to lose. And that's what that I think I think that's what that survey is is telling you. Yeah. You know, if it's about the economy, about immigration, about um, concerns over our weakness in the world, um, you know, concerns about China, um, you know, and he can win. Uh, it, it, it's and the other thing, of course, and I don't mean to be, I'm not trying to avoid anything here, yeah. but the other thing that's going to be relevant in the campaign is what happens in the next year. Yeah, good point. You know, China invades Taiwan and we do nothing, and it's going to be important. Yeah, China invades Taiwan and it's a disaster. That's going to be important too. 
economic downturn happens, that's going to be important. Or banks fail, that's going to be important. Yeah. Um, totally you know, agree. Yeah. Yeah, totally agree. Mike, excellent. Appreciate it, sir. Great analysis. Uh, Really appreciate you joining us here on Middays. Take care. You too. Thanks, sir. That's Mike McKenna, president of MWR Strategy and a columnist for The Washington Times. We're stepping aside for a break right here on Middays. We're in the Element Wealth Studios. 